All right, I'm going to get started with my introductions and hopefully anyone coming in a little late is just missing my intro. I know it can be a little tough on a Monday to fit a webinar in. So thank you all for coming in. I see some people utilizing the chat already. That's perfect. Thank you so much. Uh, so my name is Sarah Mayu. I work here at the Temple Small Business Development Center. Uh, we are actually part of a nationally accredited network of small business development centers. So there are over a thousand SBDCs in the United States. Um, we are funded by the federal government, by the Small Business Administration, and then each SBDC is funded um, within the state at the state level and hosted at a local university. So Temple SBDC is here in Philadelphia at Temple University. We cover Eastern Montgomery, Laura Bucks County, and Philadelphia. But there are 16 SBDCs in, the, uh, in Pennsylvania, and they cover all aspects of PA from Pittsburgh to Scranton, Westchester. Um, so we are very lucky that this is a webinar because we get to present this to those of you that are from any of those centers or anywhere in Pennsylvania. We're very happy to have you online with us today. And this is Search Engine Optimization 101, which is a very popular topic. We are in a very unique situation today. Normally I'm pre presenting a guest speaker who is a small business, or it's one of us here at Temple. Today, we have Janice and Lynn from the University of Pittsburgh SBDC. So we're actually hosting guest speakers from the other side of the state. And we're very happy to have them online with us today. Um, before I hand it over to Janice, just a couple administrative items. This is set up as a webinar, not a meeting. So you cannot accidentally turn your video on. You cannot unmute yourself. If you want to communicate with us, I encourage you to utilize the Q&A for questions and the chat for comments. Um, if you can't figure out the Q&A, it's at the bottom when you hover over your Zoom screen, there should be a Q&A with two chat bubbles and you can put your questions there. I just don't want them to get lost in the chat because sometimes, depending on the webinar, people get very excited in the chat. Uh, you will get a copy of this PowerPoint and a link to a recording and a follow-up email within one to two business days following the session. And that was all from me. So I'm going to go ahead and hand it over to uh, my partners in crime here, Janice and Lynn. Whoops. Well, thank you, Sarah. I'm Janice Crow, and I'm a management and marketing consultant with the University of Pittsburgh. And I want to thank Temple University and our colleagues there for uh, having this webinar today on Search Engine Optimization 101. We truly thank this partnership. Um, so as Sarah said, uh, we are one of 16 SBDCs statewide, and we provide no-cost confidential consulting for all of you small business entrepreneurs. And we can provide things such as startup assistance, growth planning, environmental management assistance, international trade development, and everything in between. We do recommend as the SBDC that you consult an industry expert if you have any specific questions on taxes, legal advice, or payroll services. We offer lots of different services. One of them is that you're taking advantage today is a no cost webinar on specific topics. And along with Temple University, the University of Pittsburgh is also designated as a center of excellence in digital services. So on to the agenda. What I'd like to talk about today with my colleague Lynn Niki is what defines an effective website, the cost and time to implement that website, search engine optimization, how to attract traffic to your website, and last, today, we'll talk about social media and its bonds to SEO and why that's important. As Sarah had mentioned, we'll, we're open to your questions. We can answer them at the end of the webinar, or if you have a question throughout, please put it in the Q&A. But let me first talk about what defines an effective website. And to answer this question, I'm going to ask all of you participants a question. Think for a moment of your most favorite website. And what makes that website your favorite? What is effective about that? So first, is it well-designed and easy to use? As a small business owner, whether you're a B2B, a B2C, a brick and mortar, or 100% e-commerce, you have to have a well-designed and easy to use website. 
And then does your website load quickly? Think about the last time, it could have been two minutes ago or two hours ago, you went to a website. Maybe you did that on your mobile device. Was that website optimized for mobile? Did it load quickly? Did it load within two to three seconds? That's important because in today's society where our attention spans are getting less and less, we want what we want on demand and we want it quickly. So a fast load time of within two to three seconds is going to be important for both your mobile uh, access as well as any laptop or desktop access to a website. And then we also want to think about inbound marketing techniques from your effective website. And this is all about optimizing your content and your traffic. More things that Lynn will talk about in a few moments. But first, as a small business owner, you have to think about what do you want to sell online? If you are primarily a brick and mortar retailer, or even a business to business supplier of products or services. How did you pivot the past 18 months during the pandemic? Were you able quickly to switch your products and services to sell online? Or did you do more of a hybrid model where you put select items online? So when you think about those products, you also have to think about how they affect your core consumer. And with a more of a service related industry, your website has to amplify that reach to new clients. One way I saw this happen firsthand during the pandemic was with a massage therapist that I recently worked with and did an SEO report for. During the pandemic, you know, we were all needed to social distance. And when you're giving someone a massage, that was more difficult to do. So what she did is with her services, she went to a hybrid model, quickly developed a great website using WordPress, where people could book their services. She could see with their links to the CDC website, how she was maintaining cleanliness and social distancing, mask wearing, um, how she followed protocols in order to keep her clients safe. And clients can then securely book that services and obtain information. So while she was able to book her services online as a massage therapist, they were still offered in person at her brick and mortar location. So for our entrepreneurs on this webinar today that haven't yet developed your website, we have no, and we know about the costs and time to implement. There are very varying uh, degrees of ways that as an entrepreneur, you could work with a website. You could work with a marketing professional and hire someone to do it for you. Or you could do several low cost methods. Through our research at the University of Pittsburgh, we've identified three services that entrepreneurs can work with to develop e-commerce websites. Wix, W-I-X is one, and they have three different plans as shown here. Shopify is another, and WordPress, which is also a managed hosting site. So if you're looking to develop a website, you could talk to a professional and also go to Wix, Shopify, WordPress, GoDaddy. There's several of them out there. Look at their services and cost and examples to see if that's something you're comfortable in developing for yourself. So let's jump in today's topic, search engine optimization or SEO. But why is SEO important? It comes down to one big company and one little word that we now use of a verb. It's called Google. When was the last time you've Googled information? Search engine optimization is all about helping these big search engines being Google, Yahoo, and Bing understand and present your content organically. 
Now, Google has nearly 93% of all searches in the United States. The remaining searches are broken out between Yahoo and Bing. So it's important that your content is being optimized by Google so that when we as consumers, as business owners, as entrepreneurs, as students, as educators, want your content, it's presented quickly and organically. But how does this work? So Google gathers information from many different sources. And some of those sources are your web pages on your website. Lynn's going to get in details here in a moment, but one of the ways web pages on your website are optimized are through your keywords and keyword searches. If I all asked you to search a pizza shop, right now it's 1213 on my clock and we're probably all a little bit hungry and you want pizza today. Mondays, believe it or not, are the number one day that pizzas are ordered, probably because we're sick of cooking maybe over the weekend, your first day back to work, whether it's virtually or, or um, in an office space, on campus, wherever it may be. We order pizzas starting at 7 p.m. tonight. So how did you search for that pizza shop? Did you just Google pizza shop near me? Did you put in a specific type of crust you're looking for? However you did it, that content is optimized through Google. And that's what brought up the answers to your question. Another way Google searches work and where they get their information is from user submitted content, such as on Google My Business and Maps users submissions. So you want to make sure as a small business owner, you have a Google My Business account and that you keep all of your information up to date. I've told this story in another webinar where my favorite Italian restaurant, obviously I love food, love to eat, but my favorite Italian restaurant during the pandemic um, in a Southern suburb of Pittsburgh, was only offering uh, pickup or delivery. So several months ago, I ordered online and went to pick up only to see the restaurant filled with people. They had opened up for in-person dining, albeit here at the state of Pennsylvania, you now we opened up very slowly at 50%. And their Google My Business still had their hours as in-person dining was closed, pick up and delivery only. Because I have patronized this local restaurant for a long time, I brought that to the attention of the owner, who's also the chef, and just said, I know you're busy, but please change this. And as Pennsylvania opens up more dining, and as we are now at 100% capacity, they were able to update their content. So when the next person Google searched Angelo's restaurant or their favorite Italian restaurant, they got the right information. Google also gets information by scanning books, documents, public databases, government entities such as the US Census Bureau. I'm probably the only person on this webinar today who's a marketing geek who was the most excited about the 2020 census. And that's a public database and that actually provides content to Google. So with that said, I'm going to turn it over to my colleague, Lynn, and she's going to go into more depth about search engine optimization. Thank you, Janice, very much. And welcome everyone. I'm very happy to be here. And I wanna just start digging into search engine optimization and why it is so important. So search engine optimization is also called inbound marketing technique. So instead of you, the business owner, going out to attract customers to your website, by the use of paid ads, you are organically increasing traffic to your website by the quality of your content, including the use of strong keywords and keyword phrases that are relevant to your business. 
So this is one strategy that helps your website rank higher on search engine results pages. Now, when you use inorganic strategies like a digital ad campaign, ad campaign on Google or Facebook, you typically won't receive as many clicks compared to an organic search result. There is a you know, feeling within the marketing world that people tend to trust those organic search results rather than a paid ad. And SEO, search engine optimization, is passive and natural. And the best part is that it is free. Now I have to say there is one caveat, and that is that it does take time to see results when you are working to increase your SEO, when you're working to increase organic traffic. But in the long run, what you're going to end up doing is increasing your website's domain authority, meaning that you will rank higher on search engine results. So what you'll see next is Janice, if you can, th thank you. So this is the search engine result when someone typed digital marketing in the search bar. So you'll see on the first three results at the top left corner of that result, there is the word ad. So those three are paid ads, which are in organic search results. While the fourth one is a non-paid organic search result. And as I said, there are many people who don't click on the search results with the word ad. Um, instead, they'll look for the first one or two or three organic search results because that they feel that that website or, you know, the two below it have more credibility because they are not associated with a paid ad. So next, we want to talk about some of the terminology you'll hear in the search engine optimization world. So the first one is SERP or search engine results page. So when you do a search on a search engine such as Google or Bing, the web pages that are displayed are the search engine results page. These results are ranked in some order with the search engine's mission being to organize each web page on the internet. But before it can do that, there are a couple of things that are happening behind the scenes. And the first one is called crawling. And this is a process by which search engines crawl across your website, searching and discovering relevant updated content on the site's pages, and they bring it back to the search engine. And once that process is complete, the search engine stores that information in its own databases and will start retrieving that information from their databases instead of fetching it from your website. And this process is called indexing, which helps with instantaneous retrieval of information. So after the indexing is complete, the search engine assigns a score to the web page based on what they consider to be relevant parameters. And based on that score is how the search engine ranks the web page. So an online presence is so incredibly important in today's world. You know, as Janice mentioned, it doesn't matter if you are a in a B to B space, business to business space, business to consumer space. It doesn't matter if you're a brick and mortar store or if you are just strictly e-commerce. Of course, an online presence is important. And search engines have become extremely important as a tool in our world. So when I'm looking to make a purchase, I Google my favorite stores to see their selection. 
um, in my town, there's a local bookstore and I'm often on their website before I, you know, walk into town to see what books they might have in stock that I want to get. Um, you know, I use informational websites to find new recipes or to look at new travel destinations that hopefully I'm going to be able to go to someday. Um, I often joke with my kids who don't know life before computers about the links that I used to go to to find information that, you know, they are able to access by the device that they are seemingly constantly holding in their hand. So search engine optimization helps to increase the traffic to your website. If you end up on a search engine organically, meaning no paid ads, you'll generate something like 20 per times more traffic to your site. So let's talk about some optimization strategies that you can employ. So creating new content and keeping it fresh is really important to search engine optimization, and it can significantly improve your rankings. So I know and I hear from a lot of my clients that sometimes it's hard to be constantly thinking up new content. And, you know, there are definitely some ways to do that. You know, think about testimonials and adding testimonials to your website. That's a good way to keep content fresh. So is blogging. You know, adding a blog to your website is a really nice way to be, you know, constantly inputting fresh information. Um, but you can also see what your competitors are doing. Um, see what is happening on their websites. You know, you don't always necessarily have to reinvent the wheel, but you can be inspired um, by your competitor's website and that might generate some ideas for some new content. Next for optimization is the concept of backlinks. And a backlink is created when one website links to another. Backlinks are also called inbound links or incoming links. And backlinks are really important to SEO. So one of my you know, most easily understood example of backlinks has to do with the um, CDC and restaurants. So back when um, we were sort of starting to open back up, um, in Pennsylvania. Um, restaurants were able to operate at 25% capacity. And, but there were, you know, other rules, you know, you had to wear a mask other than if you were actually eating or drinking. And restaurants would, you know, list what their requirements were for you to come in. And they would often, um, be taking information straight from the CDC website, um, just to make the information, you know, easy to understand and also consistent. But the other thing they were doing often is they were actually linking to the CDC website. Well, those links created millions of backlinks to the CDC website. Now, one way you can increase links to you can increase backlinks to your website is by blogging on guest blog sites. Um, you can link back to your website while also posting, say that same blog to your site. Um, as I mentioned before, blogging is a really effective way to update your page, you know, in keeping it current. So it's also important that every page of your website has both title tags and meta descriptions. Um, these are important tools um, that sort of run in the background that help um, these crawlers to pull back that information to the databases and index. So when you're using, you know, when you're having a nice complete title tag or meta description, you're using those important keywords and keyword phrases that are relevant to your business. And those, that consistency of use really helps with those crawlers and then subsequently with indexing.
So let's talk about some common myths that surround search engine optimization. So the first one has to do with keyword density or keyword stuffing being a tool that can help improve your page rankings. So this is a myth. Um, it does not help improve your page rankings. Um, loading your site with keywords that are not necessarily relevant or just using the same keywords over and over, that's considered a blackhead SEO technique. And powerful search engines are smart enough to realize what you're doing, and they could actually end up blocking your website. So you want to find those keywords that are relevant and important and that are truly specific to your business when you're using them on your website. Um, so social signals are a ranking factor. No, that is not true. So social signals such as likes um, do not help with SEO. What matters is active engagement. Active engagement on your social media channels, linking back to your website. Those are the things that are important. And as we talked about, links do matter. Um, strong backlinks can absolutely help to impact your SEO um, in a big way. And content does matter. Keeping it fresh and relevant. It's important as a business owner because you are wearing so many hats to identify a strategy that is going to work for you to make sure that you are keeping your content fresh and relevant. You know, again, take a peek at what your competitors are doing, you know, get some inspiration from them. Now, SEO is not a one-time activity. It is important that you are always keeping your update, your site updated and fresh. Um, you know, those, those crawlers are always searching sites for new content to save and index. So the more often you are adding quality content to your site, the more your site will be indexed or saved to these powerful databases and the better traffic your website will ultimately see. So, you know, if you're not in the number one position, should you just throw up your hands and give up? Absolutely not. Now, the number one position is definitely going to help you capture a lot of search traffic, but other positions can definitely still capture good search traffic. And do not buy backlinks. It's recommended that you don't buy backlinks. Um, this is also known as a blackhead SEO technique. And search engines know when you're trying to art artificially inflate your link profile and they don't like it. Um, and as we mentioned before, you know, ads don't necessarily help to increase your traffic or SEO because paying for ads is not organic. It makes a lot more sense in the long run to create that strategy to build up your SEO organically in the long run, it's going to make a much more difference and uh, much more impactful to helping your SEO rankings. And now I'm going to turn it back over to my colleague, Janice. Oh wait, no, I'm not, I am so sorry. I forgot to talk about what an SEO report actually looks like. So at the Small Business Development Center at the University of Pittsburgh, because of our Center of Excellence in Digital Services, we are so fortunate that we get to run the SEO reports across our commonwealth of SBDCs. And search engine optimization reports are typically, you know, anywhere from 10 to 16 pages or so. Um, we start with an overview, and then because we test 19 different things as part of the report, we give you results. What are the high priority fixes that need to be made? What are the low priority fixes? And then what tests you pass? Um, we look at your website design. We look at, is your website 
um, accessible? Does it meet Americans with Disability Act requirements? We look at your browser compatibility. You know, if I'm on a desktop and I'm using, you know, Bing, how quickly can I pull up your website? If I'm on a phone, if I'm on an iOS phone or an Android phone, how compatible is your website to all these different platforms? We look at your search engine optimization score. We also take a peek at your social media management. Um, as Janice is going to talk about in a minute, she, you know, she's really going to talk about how SEO and social media are bonded together. Um, we look at the speed and security of your website, how quickly it loads. You know, we like to see a website that loads it as much under seven seconds as is possible. We want to make sure that you have a secure website. There are many shoppers out there who will not click on your website if it's not secure. And then finally, we have a summary. We have some general recommendations. And then we also provide you know, what the high priority fixes are and what the low priority fixes are. And we create the report, we send it off to the SBDC consultant um, who likes to follow up with a meeting with the client so we can actually walk through the report. After that meeting, we send the recommended resources for fixes. So it's a very nice package. Um, what the feedback we hear a lot from our clients is that walking through that report gives them a much, much better understanding of what's happening in search engine optimization and how they can impact it. So now I am going to turn it over to Janice. So thank you very much for your time. It's been my pleasure to really walk through the details of the SEO. Well, thank you, Lynn. Let's see if I can get this going here. Um, Janice, before we move, move over to social media, there are actually a couple questions here. Um, okay. First, so uh, someone did ask, you know, just because I don't want us to move to social media and then have it get lost because we were talking about optimizing the website, right? Someone said, if I have snippets on my website of words or keywords that haven't been updated in a long time, would updating the snippets increase your SEO score? That's a great question, Sarah. And thank you, uh, whoever is asking that. The answer is yes. So Google, as those uh, artificial intelligence, remember, it's just all of these web crawlers and chat bots and everything out there that's technologically advanced and keeps changing on a daily basis are going through your keywords and snippets of information by updating that possibly changing um, more clearly defining your product services what you do how you do it is going to be important. So yes, I would advise that you update um, keywords and content at least twice a year. We have clients who will do it every 90 days, um, some longer, but it does help with Google search. Great, and then um, a follow-up to that. Someone says, if you're putting new social posts or new blog posts on your website, does that count as new content? Uh, the new blog posts are new content, absolutely. And that is something that, again, if you're within that blog using one or two of your keywords that will drive tra traffic to your website to give you that search engine optimization, that will be very successful. Uh, blogs and content are important. Think about it this way. Um, and Google also owns YouTube. So it may be you've Google searched a how to, how to change a light bulb. And all at once, 10 videos pop up from YouTube. That's because Google is taking those keywords and adding that to YouTube. Since they're the king of search engine and they're the king of owning more content and user generated content being on YouTube, that's why you're directed there. So having a blog that's informational, talking about how you make that candle, including a video and having a YouTube channel for your business will help to optimize across all search engines. 
Great. Um, and so this seems to be a very interesting topic for everyone, which is great. But someone says, does audio content matter? Um, and that's a great question. You know, you just said put th putting things on YouTube, but I don't think SEO pulls audio content. Is that correct? Yes and no. And I guess the answer is it can. Because on your website, if you have or your YouTube channel and you have your audio content transcribed mm -hmm. so that there is a link to words, Google's all about words, Yahoo's all about words. So if that video is transcribed, then yes, they can optimize those keywords and link and link it back. And one of the things when we go through a search engine optimization report is that we look to make sure that your images have an alt tag so that they're described with words and also that any video um, is optimized with transcriptions. Some of that is regulated by the Americans with Disabilities Act. So you do want to make sure that we have descriptions and images that are accessible to people with disabilities, whether they're legally blind, maybe have no sight, low sight, those are all regulated. And even we've seen during the pandemic specifically, the ACLU using their attorneys to go after some small businesses that websites um, were not um, ADA friendly. Great, great answer. Um, and lastly, before we move to social media, just sure. quickly, because uh, Lynn picked everyone's interest, how um, do you request an SEO report? Uh, well, you request it through your SBDC consultant. So if you're working with a consultant at Temple University, you reach out to them and say, you know, I, I was in on the webinar and I heard about the SEO report. I would really like one. And your consultant would then contact us through a form. And usually that's about a two to three week turnaround. Great. Thank you so much. Okay, well, thank you for those wonderful questions and please keep them coming. I'm just going to take the next seven to eight minutes to talk more about social media and how we can link it um, through SEO. So as you all know, social media is important. I like to describe it as the digital word of mouth that didn't exist 20 years ago. I know I'm dating myself here, but 20 years ago, when you wanted to find your favorite pizza shop or a great place to buy health insurance or a wonderful place to get new tires for your vehicle, you ask a friend, you looked in the newspaper, you watched a television commercial. Today, social media provides that digital word of mouth. And on YouTube, again, YouTube being owned by Google, 3.5 billion users worldwide. Facebook is still used by two thirds of US adults and 75% use them daily. So while our Gen Zs may not be using Facebook as much as our Gen X and baby boomers, it is still a valid platform. And for small business owners who don't yet have a website, people are going to search Facebook for news and information about your business. And Facebook does provide a free business platform for new entrepreneurs. So really go to Facebook, my business, and you could find out more. Twitter is wonderful for business to business accounts. Um, it's an inexpensive way to promote your business. Instagram can cultivate that engaged customer base, and it's extremely important depending on what you're selling, what types of products and services are millennial females use Instagram. And I'm going to talk more in a minute about those generations and who's using what. And then, of course, YouTube. So while social media does not directly contribute to your SEO ranking, but it links your share across platforms to increase that brand exposure. And we're all about increasing your brand exposure, however you can do that. And they can add up influence and influence that SEO in six directions. So by having good active content on social media, you can have extensive content distribution. So if you're posting a blog on your website, 
link that on your social media account, put a link on Instagram back to your blog on your website. This is going to give you a longer lifespan of your post. It's going to improve your online visibility and organic traffic. Uh, by adding additional brand experiences on your social media platform, you're also going to increase your brand recognition and enhance your brand reputation. And it can boost your local search engine optimization by using social media. Uh, in working on the other side of the state in Western Pennsylvania, we are blessed as you are in the Philadelphia region with a lot of wonderful small suburban towns and even rural towns that have local businesses. And they have boost their social media so that it helps encourage everyone across multiple platforms. But first let me dive into using social media across different generations. Number one, don't discount the baby boomer. While they still like cable and newspaper, they are accessing those information on their smartphones. They are engaged with social media. They're looking at Facebook and they're diving in in ways that we would have never thought that a 60 year old would. They're smart, they're articulate, and they're using social media not only to connect with family and friends, but to connect to your brand and to your business. Next, we have our Gen X, our smallest demographic nationally when it comes to numbers, but very influential. I like to refer this generation as the original soccer mom and dads. They're using Twitter, Facebook, Pinterest, and they love apps. So if you have an app tied to your business or to your uh, website in any way, they're going to engage with you. Next, we have our millennials. So they're anywhere from about 25 to 40. This generation is the core consumer currently. It's the largest demographic. They're using Instagram, YouTube, Facebook Messenger, amongst others to communicate with your business. They also like businesses that are socially responsible and they're going to engage more if you have a unique product or service that gives back. Next, we have our Gen Zs. This is our TikTok generation. And if you don't know what TikTok is, or you're just not familiar with it, please do yourself a favor, do a quick dive into TikTok, because many of our national uh, retail and business giants are using TikTok now, as well as YouTube. So if they're good enough for the retail giants such as Airbnb, Southwest, Chipotle, look into them so you have a clear understanding of how Gen Z is communicating with brands and they're communicating through video. So having strong video about your business is important, which leads me to content and cross promotion. So if you do exist within a small town outside or within even a small area within Philadelphia or in Pittsburgh, we have these small, wonderful neighborhoods within the city, the South Side, Lawrenceville, Breakery Square. Each one of these have strong retail and service industries where they have cross promotion with one another so that you can form and collaborate with other businesses within your small business district. This really gives you benefits so that you can collaborate both ways. You can put together projects, create events. Uh, last week in my community, I guess it's been two weeks ago, uh, we had the Whiskey Rebell Rebellion event, which is an annual event south of Pittsburgh because of uh, whiskey was banned back in the late 1700s and it affected the community in which I grew up and lived because of uh, that ban. And 200 years now um, in the future, we're celebrating that by putting on events, all the local businesses cross promoted one another. It created a lot of business at a time 
mid-July when there wasn't a lot of going on. So look for those conversations. And one way you can do this and one way you can create content for your website that will increase your SEO ranking is through storytelling. These are wonderful examples of people here in Pennsylvania that have large subscribers because they're telling the story about what they do on their farms. Pennsylvania is blessed with a large agricultural community. Between Pittsburgh and Philadelphia, you have four and a half hours of driving that just traverts wonderful farmland. And the center of our state is where we see these great stories come from. Our center of excellence at uh, Penn State University looks at this and helps small entrepreneurs talk about stories and how they can promote themselves. So I just want to wrap up our conversation about social media by just reminding us that we want to always identify your audience, who are your core customers, find that audience, consider your goals, and know them, because none of us can afford to target everyone. So small businesses can effectively compete with large companies by targeting that niche market. One way we know how to do that is through our demographics, something you're all quite familiar with. And if you're not, go to um, the uscensus.gov. It is free. That's our tax dollars at work. Put in your zip code, put in the region, put in your metropolitan statistical area, such as Philadelphia or Pittsburgh. And you can find out all the demographics about your community at no charge. Next, you want to look at the psychographics about your consumers. Who are they? This is really important for your millennials and Gen Zs. The more you're interested in them, what they do, who their lifestyle is, the more you're going to create that bond and keep a repeat customer. And lastly, for our business to business entrepreneurs on this call, we want to remember Talk about that industry. Look at the location, the size of firms, the preferences of how they are relating to B2B during a pandemic. And lastly, do your target market research. Your area SBDC can help you with some wonderful resources where you can find out more about your existing customers and potential new customers. Learn more about describing your profiles how they buy from you, and are you offering the types of products and services your customers are seeking? This information needs to be on your website with those keywords to increase Google searches and that organic content to lead to better search engine optimization. With this uh, webinar today, when Temple will send out the resources at the end, you'll find this slide. Um, which is the SEO starter guide from Google Search Central. Here you can use this as a resource and look up some of the technology that goes along with SEO and things that Lynn and I talked about today. So thank you for your time. Sarah, I'll turn it back over to you to find out if there's any more questions that Lynn and I can answer. Great, thank you both so much. Janice, Lynn, that was very informative. I hope everyone on the call really got a deep dive into what SEO really is. I know that's a hot acronym right now. You hear people throwing it around a lot, but um, not many small businesses know the deep, you know, how deep it goes, what it means for your website, for your social media, and for everything else. So I think that was a really, really great overview. Before we go um, into Q&A, and I do encourage everyone to please put your questions in the chat, I'm going to go ahead and put a link to our survey in the chat. So please let us know how the survey was. Uh, we are required to have, oops, sorry, that was, that was not what I thought it was. Give me one second here. Just ignore all those falses. Um, but we are required to do a survey for, by our funders, the Small Business Administration, after every single one of our webinars. It's the only cost since these are free sessions. Peter, just let us know what you liked, what you didn't like. 
and um, that will help us continue to provide these going forward. So give me one second here. I'll put the correct thing in the chat there. That was a copy and paste snafu, but thanks for all your patience. So please do take a look at that. Someone said, will, the, uh, will this be recorded? And the answer is yes. So any of you on the call here will be getting a copy of Len and Janice's PowerPoint and a link to the recording will be sent to you as well. Um, Mark, you said, what about LinkedIn? If you could just clarify that question for me, I'm not sure what you mean. What about LinkedIn? Uh, just the SEO on LinkedIn? Um, just, um, I don't know, Janice, if you know what that means. <laughs> Hey, Mark, thanks for the question. LinkedIn is a valuable social media resource, especially if you are a business to business provider. So if you're selling services or products primarily for business, LinkedIn is extremely important. I love LinkedIn for those selling insurance products such as uh, home auto health insurance. I love LinkedIn if you're a new business, and you want to let your LinkedIn followers know that, hey, I'm working for myself now, I've started a new business. LinkedIn is a wonderful way to network, especially because all of the networking events over the past 18 months haven't existed. Uh, you know, we're not doing trade shows, we're not doing meet and greets with local chambers of commerce very month, much, although I've seen a few locally in the past month. Uh, albeit not well attended. So LinkedIn can be your source, or as they would say, your link um, to business, new business prospects. So by all means, if you don't have a LinkedIn profile for yourself or your business, I highly encourage you to do so. That's great. Thank you, Janice. And just to follow up on that, actually, we have an entire social media series here at Temple SBDC. If you know, what Janice and Lynn had spoken about with social media and SEO was of interest to you. Um, they are all open and viewable on our YouTube channel as well. So we did a whole series on LinkedIn in April. Um, if you want to do a deep dive on that, and that's another way to get a backlink. So they talked about backlinks today. You can actually link your LinkedIn business profile to your website um, and get a backlink and help your SEO that way as well. So thank you uh, for talking a little bit about that, Janice. Um, Someone did say, do you have any SEO tips if you're a virtual assistant business? Uh, Lynn, what about you? What, what do you think? Can they clarify the question, please? Maybe expand on it a little bit? Yeah, Tony, if you wouldn't mind if you had a specific question or clarification that you could add there. Um, I think that's just the type of business she's in. Um, and actually, Tony, if I remember correctly, she was on one of our other sessions as well for Google My Business. And I guess something that happens when you're a virtual assistant business is sometimes you get blocked um, and the Google My Business doesn't work the same way and SEO doesn't work as well. Um, so I'm, I guess, yeah, so she's kind of trying to figure out if there's anything in SEO that would exist in that space that you know of. If not, that's totally fine. Um, and we can, you know, have Tony maybe meet with someone one-on-one -on -one about this at an SBDC consultant. But if you had any ideas off the top of your head. So is this a, a as a virtual assistant, your website for your business? And if it is, then honestly, all of the tips and tricks that we have provided related to you know, increasing and enhancing your SEO would apply to your own website for your business. Um, I'm, I'm hoping I'm not missing the point of your question, but you know, uh, everything that we have said today, you know, increasing your organic um, search engine results, you know, the importance of keywords and keyword phrases, you know, applies to, you know, for all businesses, whether it's a B2B, B2C. So I hope I'm answering your question. Great, thanks, Lynn. And, and Tony, if you want some um, specific advice for your business, please do meet with one of our consultants. We can have that one-on-one -on -one discussion. It's a little bit harder when you're in a group like this to get that nitty gritty on what's going on with your business. But I do appreciate the question. Um, someone said, is live streaming directly from social media platforms to the website new content identification for Google? That's a great question. Uh, I'll, I'll take that one. So if you're on Facebook Live and you're also streaming that content, 
it depends again as a, if you're transcribing it or if you're going to hook it to link it to your YouTube channel. Live streams happen um, organically. However, it doesn't, Facebook is very funny about business live streams. So they may ask you to pay for content. Um, if it's your Facebook business account, which I encourage you to have a separate Facebook account from your uh, personal one, um, they may or may not help. So it really depends. Um, I think maybe looking more into, uh, as Sarah had said, that they have lots of different webinars and, and specialties. So I would look at Facebook for that one. Great. And like um, Janice mentioned earlier, live streaming is good, but SEO is really going to want to see the words. So you want to make sure that you transcribe at some point as well, maybe after live streaming. Um, that's just my two cents on that as well. <laughs> Let's see. Um, someone said, what about backlinking to research papers? That's a good question. So if it was published by a university, does that count as a backlink if you, um, I guess, mention it on your website? Is that where you're going for maybe Mark? Um, okay, yes. So if yes. you're back, if you're backlinking from your website to the university, then you're creating a backlink for the university, not for your website. Yeah, that's what I was thinking too. So it's kind of the backwards. If you the research paper would have to link to your website for the backlink to work for you, but. Okay, so he makes science equipment. Okay, so yeah, I mean, if, if you're able to get them to backlink it in a research paper that, that's online, that can count as well. Right. Perfect. All right. I think that was all the questions for now. We're wrapping up. We have maybe 20, 30 seconds left here. So that was perfect timing. I wanna thank you all for the questions. You all had some very good questions as well. Some, some questions to help us think and definitely please do take advantage of the SEO audit meet with your SBDC consultant. If you have one-on-one -on -one questions like Tony that were specific to your business, please do uh, meet with a, one of our advisors and you can always Google Temple SBDC. If you're by Pittsburgh, you can you know Google Pittsburgh SBDC. Wherever you're located, um, you can you know get connected with one of our consultants and we will make sure you get the assistance you need. Uh, so thank you all once again. As a reminder, you will be getting a copy of the PowerPoint and a link to the recording and a follow-up email as well as an additional link to the survey if you had not had time to finish filling that out today. Um, any other follow-up questions, you can always email our general inbox at sbdc at temple.edu. With that, I hope you all enjoy the rest of your Monday and have a fabulous week. Thank you once again for joining us for SEO 101. Have a nice day, everyone. <laughs>